Hello you little monsters, this little monster you'll desi, coming at ya. And today, I'm going to be using my character Ritz Paris to explain the drawing process behind how I do poses sometimes by using a reference, as well as explaining both his character design and a few character design details that went into this video. And maybe this video can help you out when it comes to designing your own character or choosing a pose. Because let's face it, picking a pose and being able to draw it can be two very different things. So with all that said, let's get started. Alrighty, to start off this video, I just want to say that there is absolutely nothing wrong with using references when it comes to learning something. They're actually needed a lot, and any artist who doesn't need to use references is either a liar or they're just that good and that actually aggravates me a bit. Not for the reasons you're probably thinking. With that said, there is also nothing wrong with tracing over a picture to try and learn a pose. It is obviously a bad idea to trace an entire picture and try to copy every detail, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it when it comes to learning something new. In fact, I've always done that. So on the screen you can see that I decide to choose a character from Overwatch, if you know what Overwatch is. That way I can be able to draw the pose that I wanted, but you'll also be seeing that I had to edit it a lot in order to choose in, in, in order to fit my character's body type as well as change it a bit when it comes to drawing the weapons and the hand positions. My character Ritz Paris has a very lanky body which is obviously a sharp contrast to a character who is both extremely buff as well as wearing a lot of bulky armor that makes his fit, bleh, that makes his outline pretty thick. Knowing this straight from the get-go, I knew that I would have to change a lot in order to fit the character that I'm actually drawing and not the reference that I'm choosing from. Another thing to point out is that Ritz's weapons are different from Reaper's. While they both use similar uh, while they use similar types of guns, obviously the way the guns are built are completely different. The weapons Ritz uses are dual wielding uh, sawed off shotguns that are awesome, that have blades attached to them. To him, they're called sawed off shotgun bayonets but those are different models of guns altogether. But if somebody wants to name it something else, obviously you can't really stop them. When it came to drawing this pose, obviously I had to do a basic outline and try to work it from there. I had to resize it quite a few times as well as thinning it down in order to fit a different body type. For a character like Reaper, he wears a lot of thick armor and he's already a pretty muscular guy underneath. And another point is, instead of using an art piece that somebody already drew, I decided to take one of his figurines and take one of the poses from uh, Google Images. While I'll sometimes use uh, base pictures that people draw as references, when it comes to uh, very specific poses, it's probably better to look up a certain type of character that has a similar weapon as the character you're drawing if they have that kind of weapon. And usually looking up different kinds of figurines and the way they're posed can be really helpful too. I found that another really good way to learn different kinds of anatomy or different kinds of positioning is to also look up different pictures on Google Images. And I don't mean like fan arts or drawings from shows you like, but I mean pictures of people posing in those poses. Like whether they're dancing, walking, holding hands, or etc. Those kind of pictures can be really useful when it comes to learning anatomy or, uh, ah, bleh, or how to position things. Obviously, if you have a really simple style or a drastically different style than whatever is already drawn out, then it can be a little hard. Though it can also be really hard if you have a super simple style and you're trying to draw realistically or you're using a realistic picture as an example. But that's okay. 
It's all part of the learning process, trust me. Sadly, I don't have a lot of advice when it comes to drawing weapons. Other than using lots and lots and lots of references. I didn't record how I originally designed Ritz's weapon, so I'll probably have to do a separate video on that sometime. But again, it's another thing where it's okay to trace over a picture if it's not fan art. Or official art from something else. At least not to the point where you're putting in every detail or trying to claim it as your own. If you claim it as something that you did for references sake, then that's completely fine. A little note is that even if you draw a weapon separately from the character or draw them a pose with the weapon, it can be a little hard drawing it in different positions. Some artists will draw a weapon in all different kinds of positions to make it a little easier later on. Obviously, I'm not that kind of artist all the time, and I don't always have enough forethought. But hey, we're all learning as we go. And I'm honestly going to say that drawing guns is the bane of my existence. If you're someone who draws weapons for a living, I salute you because this shit ain't easy. When it came to drawing these guns in these positions, it took a lot of reworking. But luckily, again, having a reference on hand was really useful. I keep saying that, but that's just because I cannot stress it enough, because I honestly know how hard it is to try and do something freehand without using any kind of reference or using anything as an example. It is honestly hard as hell, and anybody who goes through that obviously comes out better for it later. But don't be afraid to rage ra the Don't be afraid to rage quit. It's always a good idea to take a step back and look at the, <laughs> this kind of thing later. I don't know if you can really tell, but I actually had to do it quite a few times when it came to drawing the weapons, which is one of the reasons why instead of <laughs> continuing to work on them, I decided to try and work on other parts of the body as well. Though I'm going to be honest, the smaller gun was a lot harder than the gun that has a that bleh, that we have a close up of. Though there was one part of the gun that I kept drawing backwards for the longest time for whatever reason until I finally figured out, "Hey, I'm drawing this backwards." It actually made it a lot easier to continue drawing it when I drew the part facing the right way. One thing that I will definitely admit that I have trouble with is positioning things, and not making them look flat. When it came to drawing these weapons, I had trouble trying to make them look three-dimensional rather than making them look like a bad, bad, bleh, bad Photoshop job. But another tip I want to give out is that one thing that I've started doing is taking pictures of my own hands in different positions or holding different objects. Doing this was really helpful because it made it easier to draw the way the fingers are supposed to be curled, as well as how the wrist is supposed to be positioned. In fact, some artists will even take pictures of themselves or their friends in different kinds of positions or different poses, that way they can draw them later. Though I'm not very comfortable ever putting my face online other than my mom's Facebook because I can't really stop her from doing that. So you guys will have to wait quite a while before I ever do a face reveal because I'm not putting anything like that into anything that'll be a speed paint. These sort of tips can also help when it comes to drawing character faces. Obviously people from different backgrounds are this ethnicity is different ethnicities finally will have different facial structures so with Ritz off camera I researched different ways to draw noses as well as different kind of European noses since Ritz is from France and he is Eastern European 
I honestly can't tell you what any of his facial features are called, even though it's not extremely detailed. But I can tell you that he has a very European face. At least to the extent that my art style will allow. This was also something I did when I was originally designing my Dear Fellow Traveler characters. I had to look up a lot of different pictures in order to get the noses and cheekbones right since it does vary between tribes. And I've also done it more recently when I was drawing Anya in a more realistic style. If you're someone who's trying to try out for a more realistic style than the typical anime style or a simplified cartoony style, then I definitely suggest looking up different kinds of facial features and trying to learn how to draw them. Not really on a character right off the bat, but more like uh, something to train your hand. In all honesty, tracing is more like training wheels. Like I said, I did practice drawing different features before I drew this picture, which I referenced off screen to see if I could try and do them myself. And I think the results ended up being pretty good, don't you think? To give a little context on Ritz, Ritz is a very, uh, I guess you could say a bit of a grumpy character. He's a little socially inept, so he kind of has a very stern looking face. He doesn't, he doesn't really know how to interact with other people face to face, so his default is to sort of have a resting bitch face. He is pretty much the type of character that likes studying. He likes looking up different topics and learning all he can about them, but as a result that also means he doesn't get a lot of sleep at night. And whatever sleep he does get means that he is dead asleep for hours. Which also ends up being that he doesn't get enough to eat when he's alone. He is really not the type of person who should ever live alone. Not talking from experience, of course. But despite, <laughs> despite his seriousness, Ritz does love the mystical. He's really into steampunk fashion and all of that. Sadly, because of how he grew up and how his grandma views things like that, he's never had a chance to exercise that kind of love. So when him and his friends start playing the game and they start using the alchema, the machine that fuses things that's part of the Spurb game mechanics, he definitely goes to town on making a bunch of steampunk cosplay that he's always wanted to try out. Which is both what resulted in the current outfit that I've drawn him in as well as the weapons he wields. When looking up different kinds of steampunk outfits, I tried to pick out ones that would definitely suit Ritz, and that would go good with his color scheme. And while also thinking on his character, I decided to go with a slightly more simplified outfit compared to a lot of the other designs that you can see online. I kind of think that Ritz would have to go calmly into getting used to wearing clothes like that, so, at first, his first outfit wouldn't be very complicated. And if you know what steampunk fashion is, you know that a lot of the fashion can be where it has a bunch of bits and baubles as decorations. So, his first outfit would be more practical. While still having a pretty fun shape to it, especially when you add in his colors. To say the least, Ritz's color scheme is a bit eye-catching, seeing as he has a very toxic green and poison purple hues. At least that's what I call these shades of colors. <laughs> when it actually got down to coloring him in, I actually had to modify the colors a few times to try and get them right so it wouldn't be very overbearing. I am honestly jealous of artists who can use a lot of really bright, eye-catching colors without making it look like a mess. I'm still working on that, but I think I'm getting pretty close. Another big part of Ritz's design are the red glasses that he always has on. And this is because Ritz is actually colorblind to the color red. So they're a type of prescription glasses that helps him see the color red. 
though my research has shown that it doesn't work as well as people assume, but he still kind of needs them. And at first they were just a regular pair of glasses that have uh, red lenses. But he soon turns them into red lens goggles that have the same prescription that he needs. I'm honestly surprised that none of the beta kids ever thought of to do that other than using their glasses as a type of computer. Which, yes, his goggles also do too. If you've never watched Homestuck or played Homestuck or, like, looked ever looked it up, some of this may sound a bit confusing, but oh well. The Alchemigizer that still can't say that word out loud for some reason, basically makes whatever the heck you want by fusing items together, and it makes the game a lot easier. That being said, one of the reasons why I chose a more dramatic pose rather than Ritz standing firm with his guns in hand, either holding them up or aiming them down, was because I wanted him to look a bit heroic. Ritz has always wanted to be some type of hero. Like I said, he reads a lot, so I'm guessing when he was younger, he definitely read enough stories of, her of heroes fighting monsters. And now that he's given a chance to do the same, he might try and envision himself as a hero. But in actuality, Ritz is more of a strategist than an actual fighter, but he can still hold his own. And one of the reasons why I chose green and purple for Ritz's color scheme is because of how sharply it would contrast the orange and yellow of the Sierra of Light outfit. Despite his resting bitch face and his sometimes grumpy attitude, Ritz does really mean well a lot of the time. Problem is, he just doesn't know how to socialize with people. So I think that the two contrasting colors with the outfit that he'll get later on in the story is a good example of how he starts to slowly change. He goes from a very socially anxious kid who's never had a chance to talk to anyone other than his grandma to someone who has a lot of friends and ends up having a warmer and brighter personality later on. When it comes down to having characters who have a very solid color scheme, the colors will help tell a lot about the character. When you first look at Ritz, you might think that he's just a very grumpy person with possibly a toxic personality with the way the colors mix. But that's just on the outside. When you get to know him and you talk about a lot of topics with him, you'd see that he actually has a very bright personality. And you'd probably see that he's just someone who wants to have a lot of friends, but he's just not sure of how to go about it. And that's part of the reason why I decided to gold accent his outfit a little bit, as well as why his shape is the Noble Lily. At least I think that's what it's called. Though I guess it might also be called the French Lily, I think? All I really know about it is that in medieval times, it was used for a lot of symbolism. And I thought that would be a good hint of the fact that Ritz is both French and he does have a noble heart, even if it's buried under a lot of grumpiness. Paired with the pose of him looking straight ahead and standing very firm, he might give off the impression that he's a bit aggressive, and in the game he definitely gets that way for a little bit until he meets up with his friends again. And while there is a lot more to say about this character, there's just not enough time in the day to talk about him right now. And so, with all that said, let's take a step back and look at the results. One of the reasons I decided to use Ritz in this video as an example is because he's a very knowledgeable character so I thought it would be only fitting. I honestly hope to do more advice videos in the future because of how many people who message me asking for advice on how to draw something or how to further their art style. There are definitely a lot of ways to do that and I can only ever speak of my experience, but if it can be helpful, then I'm happy. Ritz was a ton of fun to draw in this. I really love the steampunk style and all of that, so I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Before the video ends, I just want to give a special thanks to Olivia Estridge for her constant support on Patreon, as well as my past supporters, Ali Neon Val Ulu and Ray Draws. 
Thank you guys so much for the past and current support. It always means the world to me. If you want to support me on Patreon, I have a $2 tier, a $5 tier, and a $15 tier. And the link to both my Patreon and other social medias are down in the description if you want to check them out. But of course, it's not required. If you want to help out the channel in a different way, please like, share, or subscribe and leave a comment down below. I also post a lot of my content on a website called Tapas where you can also support me with ink that you can earn. Another special thanks to my Tapas ink supporters. Planet Croissant, Gale, JMX, Ali Neoval, Liv Est, Morbid Mushroom, Yamba, Iris Tones, Zeet Zeal, Blumpst Moon, Nix Bunny, TK, <gasps> Shuttergate, Tor Tor, July, Dirt Void, A Bunch of Numbers, Penny Wrights, and Melody the Bunny. Thank you guys so much for your support. And with all that said, watch out for the monsters under the bed, and I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!